Hello, and welcome to episode 5 of Sarastro's Descent painting series. In this video, we'll be painting Widow Tara from Fantasy Flight Games' Descent Journeys in the Dark 2nd Edition. With her flowing purple robes, furry headdress, and varied colour palette, Widow Tara is quite a fun miniature to paint. Let's take a look at the painting stages. I've chosen to prime the miniature in black, but I've also sprayed on some white from above to help bring out the details and provide a light base colour for the furry headdress. We'll then apply the base colours except for the trim of the scarf which I'll be painting later on. We'll follow that with some dark shades to bring some depth to the recesses. We can then paint on our highlights before finishing the miniature off with some facial details and a scenic base. Let's jump straight in with the base colours. I'm going to begin by painting the skin with some warg flesh. As usual, I like to use a spare old brush to transfer some paint to the palette and mix in a couple of drops of water. I'm now going to mix some Mephiston Red with some Warg Flesh to create a dark red base colour for the red sash. We can also paint the red ties on the staff with this. Next, I'm using some XV88 for most of the brown areas apart from the hanging belt strap. This will include the leather armour, boots and the staff. I'm also using this for what looks like a bracer on the left arm as well as a decorative armband. I'm now going to paint all of the purple areas using Xerius Purple. Don't forget the ribbons on the horns, as well as the belt clasp. We can now paint the hanging belt straps with some scrag brown. And for the hair, I'm using German grey. Next, I'm going to paint the skull and the various bones that decorate the miniature using Vallejo's Ivory.
And finally, I'm painting the decorative fur with Screaming Skull. This includes the fur we can see on the right wrist, as well as the rim of the boots, and of course the headdress. We're now ready to add some shade. I'm going to begin by shading the skin using Celia Green Shade. Next, I'm going to use some Agrax Earthshade for the brown areas, which means the brown leather as well as the staff. I'm then going to thin this with a roughly equal measure of medium and apply it to the skull as well as the decorative bones and the furry rim of the boots and the furry bracelet. For the furry headdress, I've chosen to also mix in a small amount of Drukii Violet. After applying a layer of this to the entire headdress, I'm going to let it dry before applying another few layers just to the lower portion to create a simple gradient. We can also shade the underside of the furry bracelet with this. Once dry, we're ready for the highlights. I'm going to begin by highlighting the skin, starting with the original Warg flesh, which I'm lightening with some Strachan Green in a couple of stages. I'm now using pure Strachan Green.
For my brightest highlight, I'm mixing in some Ogryn Camo. Next, I'm going to highlight the cloak, and I'm starting with a roughly equal mix of the original Xerius purple and some Gene Stealer purple. I'm applying multiple thin layers of this to help achieve smooth transitions, especially for the cloak. I'm now going to mix in some additional Jean Stealer purple. I'm now using pure Jean Stealer purple. For my brightest highlights, I'm going to mix a little Screaming Skull into the Gene Stealer Purple in a couple of stages. I'm now going to create a dark glaze using Nagaroth Night, which I'm thinning with several drops of water and using to brush into the recesses to increase the depth, but also to help blend some of the transitions. This can also be used to gently tone down any overbright highlights if necessary. We should apply this in several layers to achieve maximum depth of tone. Next, I'm going to highlight the hanging belt straps with Scrag Brown, lightened with some Fire Dragon Bright in a couple of stages.
Here I'm using pure Fire Dragon Bright for the brightest highlights. I'm now going to highlight the remaining brown sections, starting with a reapplication of XV88, to which I'll be adding some Uriel Yellow in a moment. Now I'm lightening the XV88 with the addition of the Uriel Yellow in a few stages. We can afford to go really quite bright here. I'm now going to paint the trim of the tacit with some screaming skull. I'm also going to give a few small highlights to the furry areas with this. Next I'm going to highlight the red sash, using some Evil Sun's Scarlet mixed with just a little warg flesh. and I'm providing a final highlight with some pure Evil Sun's Scarlet. I'm now going to highlight the skull and the bones with the original ivory.
I might provide a few very small final highlights to the furry headdress with this. I'm now going to add a small amount of Nagaroth Knight into the ivory to create a pale lilac colour and use this to paint the trim on the scarf. I'm then going to lighten this by mixing back in some of the ivory in a couple of stages to provide the highlights. I'm now mixing in some white for the final brightest highlight. Finally, this would also be a good time to paint the skull on the sash, using some Screaming Skull. We're now ready for some finishing touches. I'm now going to paint the eyes using Vallejo's Ivory. And I'm also painting the tusks with this. And for the iris and pupil, I'm applying a tiny dot of German grey. I'm now going to mix some ivory into the German grey and use this to highlight the hair. Next, I'm going to use some ivory that I've thinned down a little more to paint on the facial tattoos. We can now protect the miniature with some matte varnish. And as usual, I'm going to rebase the miniature with a scenic alternative as detailed in episode 1. And I'm once again finishing the base off by adding one or two tufts of grass.
Thank you for watching. I truly appreciate the positive reception this series has had so far. Alongside the remaining core set heroes, I'm going to begin mixing in some other monsters over the next few episodes. My special thanks as always go out to the amazing patrons who are generously supporting all of the work that I do. Join me again soon as we continue painting miniatures from Descent, Journeys in the Dark. Happy painting!